So this looks like a uh, pretty fun project here. What, uh, what was it like working with Ken, working with Ping, working with this YZ? Um, I mean, it's been fun. I, I mean, I always have loved two strokes. So like when these kind of events like come, it's, it's fun to be involved in one. And obviously to work with somebody like Kenny, I mean, he's super talent. So like we're into that. So we started with Ping's bike and then uh, actually Schneike did all the work. So like he, he deserves a lot of props on this more than I do. But he built a really sick bike. They got great graphics, great details on everything. I mean, it, it's pretty nice. What? Uh, so is this based off the uh, infamous RV spec bike you guys built, or? Yep. Uh, kind of when RV was racing, like 125s and 250s, we sort of revamped all of my Yamaha specs. You know, like to try to get them better, because you know, like they were like probably the last time I did 125 spec was like 15, 16, and so when RV was riding them. We spent two or three weeks kind of really trying to get it better. And then the 250 was uh, kind of the same thing. Ryan was going to ride uh, straight rhythm a few years ago, so we spent a few weeks on it. And then um, there's a couple parts like the, we have, there's two or three different, you know, uh, we call them race spec pipes um, that we played with. And we just kind of found a good combo that we think is really good. So I think it's, it's going to be really well. How much stuff did Kenny try yesterday when he ride the bike? Did he go through anything or pretty much just pop on and run it? Uh, no, he actually was pretty comfortable with it right off the bat. I think I think the main thing was just um, tweaking suspension a little bit, settings and things, and then I think he was fine. How tough is it um, looking at suspension on this? You guys do have a set of your guys' uh, in-house built show a kit on it, but I think of like the clevis, the lugs. I imagine you guys haven't had a lot of those made for YZs, in particular shock body clevis for the old two-stroke. Was there even, did that take a little hunting or is there much of this stuff even laying around? No, no, we had, uh, I think we had one, one ex, we got one extra set of forks. That's the last shock. I actually, we looked around for a couple of the shocks that we had sold to people and I actually bought this set of suspension from Tony Alessi. <laughs> I do a little hunting there, jeez. I know. Hey, Tony's a collector. He's got all kinds of stuff laying around. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Very nice. Um, how, when you guys went back to work on this, like you said, for RV, I mean, it's been a while since you guys have probably had doing heavy two-stroke development. How much was really left in this bike to hunt down power-wise? Um, was there anything really new you guys had learned over time that you were able to implement in it, or how much was there left in it? Um, well, there's a couple things. I like uh, V-Force has worked on some new reed cages and stuff, so there's a little bit of an improvement there. Um, like I said, tweaking on the cylinder a little bit maybe a little power but not a lot and like i said pipe combinations and stuff but the bike's been the same for a long time and i think you can maybe overdo it by just fiddling with it too much and we just got something that we think is really good and we're just going to stay there what about a cdi stock in this one or yep yep that wasn't that was something that you know probably back in the day wasn't as prevalent as it is now like uh i think when we raced kx is for years, we ran a standard uh, black box, and then finally we got uh, a, a programmable ignition that we could play with. But it it really did. It's, it takes quite a bit of fiddling to try to beat. The OEM map is pretty good. You're not dealing with so many variables, kind of like a four-stroke, so they're more on and off the throttle on these things anyway. Is it uh, funny coming back to this event, because I think of the last straight rhythm before we've had this little break, and I don't mean this in a bad way to our team, but <laughs> the last one I went to, there was a lot of other people bringing you guys, uh, bringing you guys their bikes for some uh, jetting advice. Is it, is it kind of interesting that that has dropped away so quickly for some people's knowledge? Well, I think it, it's, it's kind of one of those things you gotta sort of. It, it truthfully is just a little bit of experience, you know, and a feel, and a, and a, like you either feel it or you hear it and stuff like that. And actually, like. Uh, Craig Beal used to work for us. He's good at it. Schneike's really good at it. It's just, you know, after they do it a little bit, they're, they're as good as I am by far. You know, like it's just you you hear it and you feel it. And then when you hear it and feel it, you know which way to go. I was actually talking to Schneike about this yesterday. It'll probably sounds still fun for you guys on that is going to Mammoth every year. You guys still get to play with that a lot, help a lot of different people get to experience it. Um, again, like that stuff, just the, the main stuff, so it keeps you kind of connected. So do you enjoy... Outside of this, do you still enjoy doing like mini O's and Mammoth and those kind of events? Yeah, Mammoth is probably the one that I think is the coolest one to go to if you're going to help people just tune their bike. 
because you're at high altitude and and nobody really has a setting for that you know everybody is used to being down pretty pretty low and when you go up real high like that it just it runs funky and stuff like that so they get they get a little bit lost and it's 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 actually kind of cool to help people like that speaking of jang how much um fuel wise over the years i know all the fuel like anything most of the development has been four stroke driven but with vp have you guys ran a, have they really brought you guys anything new that you guys have implemented and played with on your two stroke builds um, I think for back in the day, like years and years and years, it was always C12, which uh, VP has a, a fuel C12, probably the most reliable, awesome fuel for just everything, you know, like no problem. You can run high compression with it, but then if you want to make like uh, a little more power and you want better response, they used to have a fuel called MRX01 that was good, but they quit making it. And then uh, we convinced Bruce into making a new fuel. And that was probably, it was when Sensorillo was on mini bikes. Uh, and we, I think there was like four or five different fuels that we tested and we honed in on one and that's what they call MRX-02. And that's a, it's an awesome fuel for power. Like it's at least, I mean, it's a horsepower over C12 by far. So, uh, and they, they are working on right now, they're working on a, a new fuel VP is going to have here pretty soon, I hope. We're going to try to work on, you know, an MRX-03, so. How different is it to jet between the two to get into the power of the MRX-02? Is it, is it finicky at all to jet to, or is it pretty mellow? MRX-02 takes richer jetting, and it is a little more volatile. So, like, if, it, if the bike gets really hot, it can sort of, you know, get away from you and start to detonate. So, like, you have to be a little more careful. You can't, uh, I wouldn't recommend running the same compression ratio that, you did with say C12. It's a it's a different way of building the engine if you're going to run that. Nice. Uh, last question for you. So this situation here with Kenny, uh, the one uh, when I saw the bike yesterday, the one photo I took of it because I wanted to have it just for long term reasons on the fork. You have the of course the rocks and tag on the suspension. Um, you know whether it's Reed, Ricky coming back to you. You you have a lot of guys that come to you for projects like this. Um, in, in in Chad's case, yes, he's used you for a long time, but I think when he came to you for 2-2. Was that really the first time you guys had worked together? And the reason I ask this, this is the first time you've really worked with Ken, right? Um, yeah, I mean, like, I think, yeah, first time I've ever worked with him kind of one-on-one. -on -one. I, I actually did kind of help a little bit with the Honda the last time he rode straight rhythm, just race day with jetting a little bit. But, no, we've never built anything for him and stuff like that, so it's kind of cool. And then, like I said, you know, Schneike put it all together and then, He'll wind up jetting it. I, I'm, I'm here to watch and just help. Is it cool though with your guys' brand though that you still get those calls? Like even as the generations roll on, guys want to do something cool like this. You're still, you guys are the one of the first calls. Well, I do think like I know there like there's, there's a lot of different engine builders, you know, for four stroke and two stroke and stuff. But I mean like I think. I think uh, year in and year out, I think our four-stroke stuff is awesome. We help a lot of customers on all different brands. And I and I really think, like, on the two-stroke stuff, I really, I can't say there's anybody better than than our stuff. And if some of it's hype, um, but if it's no bullshit, real stuff, I think we're probably the best.